Right, well, here we are. Steve, first of all, thank you very much for inviting us yeah. in. Okay. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm yeah. good. Welcome to the Guinness Storehouse. So you're in a not not well seen part of the Guinness Storehouse. You're in the you're in the global the Privileged. global team's office. Yeah. Um, on the uh, on one of the floors of the storehouse, and this is this is the bar within the office where we do a lot of our a lot of our testing. I can help you with all that testing, Steve. No problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll be in there. Yeah, just looking at it, I'm getting thirsty. Yeah. So first of all, we've got some questions from our followers, so I thought we'd roll through. Guinness Global Head of Quality. This is your is. your job, yeah. which straight away that sounds like the dream job. You know, is that something that you've always wanted to do and achieve this this role, or is that is it just come about? Well, no, I would have always aimed at this role as as part of my career. It's one of those roles which you do you pinch yourself if yeah. you if you get to do it. Like I'm working for Guinness since 1999, since I left university. I've brewed in. I think I counted 38, 39 countries for Guinness Jeez. around the world. Um, I'm a master brewer for Guinness till, since 2005, so nearly 18 years as a master brewer, and then got the opportunity to move into this global role, which covers all aspects of the Guinness brand, from how we brew, the raw materials we use, to where we package, to how we advertise, mm -hmm. and then how we dispense and the technology development platform that we now have. It's very cool to be able mm -hmm. to talk about the beer that I love as part of my job. Yeah, yeah. As well. It's well, a beer we love as well. Absolutely love well, it. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, obviously, you've worked on a few projects now mm. while you've been here. Which project would you say you're most proud of working on? Well, it's funny. It's, I it's, get it's, a guess. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's sitting right it has it, I guess. to get to develop something which is totally groundbreaking yeah. to mm. bring Future. kind of Guinness to a whole new consumer base, yeah. a whole new experience yeah. for people at home and for people to actually believe it's truly magical. Mm -hmm. And then to see the success yeah. we've had with it in Ireland. Yeah. So working on Nitro Search probably is probably the coolest thing I've done in my career. And I'm very proud of the fact that I worked for Guinness for so many years, yeah. but I think we all pinch ourselves who got to work on this project when we see the reaction. It's had, like we launched in Ireland last year, or uh, about 16, 17 months ago now, yeah. uh, in Ireland to phenomenal demand that we actually couldn't yeah. keep up with, as everybody knows. Yeah. And then we've launched in Singapore. I think we sold out a month of their supply in four days. So phenomenal reaction there. Mm. So how does it work? So yeah. You guess. So you get two pieces to it. You have you have the device, and you have the spout. Now part of the genius of it is actually the spout. So anyone who's who works in a bar or knows the Guinness spout. You have mm. three elements in in the Guinness spout that's yeah. in in the keg tap. You have the little plate with the little holes in it and has the Guinness pushes through that, that's what breaks out the gas. Mm -hmm. You have a little ring, to, uh, rubber ring to make sure it all stays sealed. And then underneath you have a thing called a flow straightener. And that turns the very turbulent flow of all the gas breaking out into yeah. what engineers describe as laminar flow, right. a very smooth flow. And then what happens is you don't get loads of bubble generation, but you get the gas breaking mm -hmm. out nice and gently. So at one stage we did actually have a little flow straightener in there but we thought very difficult to clean, it wasn't yeah. gonna work, so we said we need to come up with something cleverer than just copying what we have there. Yeah. And it's this shape here. So that shape, that configuration from there to there, yeah. does that smooth flow. And then so. down through the spout smooths it all out, so you get the really clean flow through there. Everyone talks about the gas breaking out and the surge yeah. and the settle, and that's absolutely what makes a great pint of Guinness. But another part of it is what gas you leave behind. So all the gas you need is dissolved in the Guinness, you need to leave some of that behind, and that's what gives Guinness some of the bite yeah. that you get from the flavor. So it pulses on and off, so we break out the right amount of gas, mm -hmm. that it surges and settles in 60 seconds. And, and there is photographs that I hope will never see the light of day of me on my knees <laughs> in our developer's kitchen with Micah Draft Nitro Surge and Keg literally comparing wave to wave of the oh, surge and settle of Guinness to make sure that this yeah. was surging exactly A lovely sight, the same I love way. that. So we are always innovating. Um, so we're always looking at new ways. And one of the things where, and the widget is incredible technology, mm. but what the, what the widget doesn't give you, say, is that, like the two-part pour, the experience of pouring yeah. yourself mm. through a spout, and a little more kind of a finesse in yeah. terms of the pour. Yeah. Yeah. Right? At the time we were seeing all these other kind of hacks and different equipment people yeah. were using to surge Guinness, and even, 
people in, in, in the in the brewery where I used to work were going, God, Steve, you're 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 being beaten to the you're wow, being beaten yeah. to the people. <laughs> we love these, and I was like, I couldn't say anything. I was like, just wait, yeah, just wait, yeah, just yeah. wait. Yeah. We're, ne- we're, we're nearly the there. A question here from a follower. Someone said, I love the taste of the nitro surge, but I can't get great lacing on the glass like others do. What are your thoughts? How can I fix that? It's uh, lacing comes down to your glass cleanliness. Yeah. 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 So there are there are ways to do it. like obviously in, in a bar you have professional yeah. glass washers um, and we and there are bars even in Dublin that I know that only put Guinness glass and yeah. they have a Guinness Just glass Guinness. washer as yeah. opposed yeah. to a glass yeah. washer and what causes the lacing is there are tiny little micro sites on the inside of a glass and what happens is the Guinness head if it's formed correctly it clings to those micro sites. If you allow grease into your glass, what happens is the grease fills the microsite so it doesn't yeah. lace. Mm. So at home it's more challenging because people don't have glass washers. I don't have a glass washer, nope. so mm. I have my own techniques at home. But the one I found the most effective is actually just salt, table salt, and hot water. Yeah. So what you do is you, you get your glass, you sprinkle table salt around it in a basin of hot water. And when I say hot, not even that hot, 50 degrees. Oh, right, so it doesn't have to be red hot sort of. People not really, people no. say it's got to be really, not really, really hot. No. And I've done a video on my own Instagram showing oh, no. the temperature. And I think when I did it, it was about 46 degrees. Okay. Mm. And then I use something like a, a bottle brush. Um, yeah. Just but keep it only for your glassware. Yeah. yeah. And just scrub the inside of the glass. And that cleans the grease out. If you put a glass into a dishwasher with, with plates and yeah. stuff with food on it, the grease just moves around and coats the glass. Nitro Surge will lace your glass as beautifully as once the glass is clean. Yeah. So Drying your glass, Steve, is it, do, you, do you let it stand and dry? Because I've yeah, so people you, said tea towels, they'll have stuff on it as exactly, well. Exactly. So you, you wouldn't use, so yes, that's a very good yeah. point. So leave the glass upside down, yeah. usually on some sort of a grate, yeah. so you can air dry. Air dry. Yeah. And just allow it to air yeah. dry. The second you put tea towel on it, you're putting it back in You're the putting dirt. whatever dirt or detergent. grease might be on it or detergent, yeah. you're putting yeah. that back and you're, yeah. you're recoating those sites inside yeah. the glass. Because you can see when you obviously pour Guinness and it is dirty glass, you can almost see the marks on the inside of the glass where there's like the sponge has been. And the cloud is where you get those kind of grease marks yeah. and then the gas will cling to those yeah. grease marks and yeah. show those, those clouds Horrible. with inside the yeah. glass. Yeah. Oh. It's, it's such a, obviously a beautiful looking beer and I think that's why it appeals so much on TikTok, Instagram, because people you know, will be swiping through and they'll see you know, when you tilt it and the head, oh, you know, it turns around. And it's, it's, but there is that when you get it right, there's that magic that no other beer has yeah. in terms of that surge, that settled, Absolutely. that mystique. When you get that pint, I can see it now, and it's just yes. right. It's celebrated. Oh. Yeah. Like it is, there's no beer around no. the world that a pint is celebrated yeah. as much. I'd love to know how many Instagram accounts there are oh, yeah, uh, talking about Guinness around the world. I, mean, I see new ones every, yeah. Other, yeah. every yeah. other week cropping up. It's a sign that you know, it's people, yeah. more people are becoming more aware of it, and I think there's that younger yeah. audience now coming yeah. in. The demographic of Guinness... Yeah, it's coming right down. It's coming down. As you, yeah. We've seen with, with cool tech like Nitro mm. Surge, you do mm. see a younger yeah. younger audience of people in their 20s yeah. now. Because people associate Guinness and quality in the same thing. Which means if you are a group of friends, mm. um, if, if a pub has a, has a reputation for mm. great quality Guinness, everybody goes yeah. there. Because yeah. if, if your quality of your Guinness is right, yeah. everything else must yeah. be right. Yeah. Even how the font looks mm. on the bar, it's, it stands out, it's iconic. Absolutely, um, yeah. It's yeah. nice to see the younger ones, though, getting into Guinness now. We got to Dublin, we just got off the bus, didn't we, to go to the hotel. And within two minutes, a car bibbing the horns, wind are down. Hiya, lads, love your show. <laughs> what a welcome to Dublin that was. Yeah. It was incredible, wasn't yeah. it? So, well, people are incredibly it. proud of yeah. Guinness. Yeah. So there are people talking. And, and, and for you guys, are both Guinness yeah. and have number one beer. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Um, which was that's incredible right. to announce yeah. that to uh, yeah. the world last week. I think that's a lot down to me drinking it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you probably boost your sales on your I own. Think, yeah. <laughs> So anyway, going back to the nitro surge for a moment, yeah. um, we've got some more questions. People have asking, uh, people have been asking, uh, do you know when we can expect the nitro surge device and cans to be released in the supermarkets in the UK? Yes, so we've obviously we we, yeah. we we did the we did the very cool kind of tease drop um, through the the web store before mm. Christmas. We do expect it to go more into uh, into mm. supermarkets in in the coming months so stay tuned and uh, we'll let you know watch yeah. this space yeah. Yeah. not giving Very a lot exciting, away yeah. there are they yeah. Yeah. and of, of course as well obviously we've got a lot of american and canadian views and they would love to know as well because they're desperate as well yeah, yeah. but then any slight hint of- um so yes i get questions like this as well all the time when, when is it coming to yeah. all sorts of parts of the world yeah. 
But we are, so as we've launched in Ireland, we've done the drop in GB, as I just mentioned, we've launched in Singapore, actually, which I mentioned. Yeah. And hopefully over the next 12 to 18 months, we'll see yeah. Nitro Surge go yeah. much further, much so further around the world. So just hang on, guys, it will be coming to yeah. you soon. Don't worry. But it is what, as I said, it was, yeah. it was one of these incredible ones where yeah. we just, for the first yeah. year, we just couldn't keep up with the demands, yeah. even in one, in, in one country. So we've got some general Guinness questions from some of our viewers. Someone's asked, um, how much does the age of a keg affect the quality? Does it at all? Fresh beer, like anything, mm. um, beer is is a food product. So mm. we have we have a shelf life on on mm. our beer. Once the beer is served within the shelf life, it's mm. expected to taste yeah. absolutely beautiful every time. Once it's served correctly and everything else. Yeah. So the key thing with any, like we have our own standards in terms of what happens once the keg leaves the brewery. We, yeah. call, we call it so anyone in the bar trade will know we call it the seven C's. And things like correct temperature. So if you store yeah. the beer cold, like anything, if you mm. store food mm. cold, it stays yeah. fresher for longer. So mm -hmm. we look for our beer to be stored in cold rooms, about eight degrees, and that keeps it fresher longer. So once the keg is looked after, mm. the key thing then though is once you tap the keg, and that's yeah. another one as well, is once you tap the keg, you should only use it for two weeks. Yeah. Max. It's like anything. Exactly. When it's open, get it used. Once, once it's opened, yeah, yeah, use it up. And and I see I see that question from a lot of people of home bars. It's a very cool to have a two get a keg of Guinness in your yeah. home bar but for you've got to event, use it once it's but, open. but you have to use it so yeah. if you go back to that keg a couple of months later yeah. it won't taste as fresh yeah. as it did because once you've tapped it but once the keg is sealed yeah and it's within the we we have got the the, uh, the best before date on the yeah. dome of the keg yeah. it's like anything it'll taste great mm. is it true I'd, i've heard this it might be false about the best before dates obviously they change is it dependent on the country is that to do with the laws or no, we've a, we've a global best before date. We've a, we've a, because of the turnaround of the kegs in Ireland are so fast yeah. to manage stock. We've quite a low best before date. Okay, the yeah. kegs, kegs in GB in Ireland turn around a few so weeks. So that's all. So yeah. all about yeah. turnarounds. But then globally, we've the same best before date. Yeah. Yeah. Once they go beyond GB in Ireland, where the kegs turn fast, so shipping mm. to the US, shipping to mm. Southeast Asia, mm. or the Middle East, mm. or anywhere like that, they've all the same best before date. So we've got a, a bit of a fun question there. Someone's asked. Have you ever had a bad pint in a pub and then had to send the Guinness quality team in afterwards? I have regular contact with the Guinness quality team. Yeah. So um, we, uh, yeah, so regular, <laughs> whether they're in Ireland or in the US or, or in GB or anywhere else, we have regular contact. And we do we do our own audits. If I do come across something that I don't think is quite right, I'll let them know. Mm. I, I tend to, if I'm in bars, I tend to fly under the radar myself. Yeah. But if I see anything that I'm not too sure about, I will, uh, I will get it checked out. Yeah. So, I, I wouldn't really make a scene in a bar. Yeah. Um, um, but I will get yeah. I will get things checked out. So I see if I see the glass where it's yeah. slightly dirty or cloudy, or mm. if the head is slightly thinner, it might mean the, the cold room is running a bit mm. too cold, and I'll let the quality team know. But then on the other side, if I get a truly great pint, and uh, recently I actually wrote to a bar. I was in um, the US for our national sales oh, conference wow. in September, and um, on my day off, I went down to Washington DC, which I'd never been to before, and I walked around and all the tourist stuff, and then. Before I headed to the airport, I mystery shopped a few bars. And one of them was a bar um, in DC called the Irish Channel, um, which I went in and I am, I'm, I'm, I don't know, this might affect your following now, I'm a Tottenham fan. <laughs> <laughs> and actually there was a Tottenham game on and it was big, great atmosphere. Yeah. And I went in, I ordered a pint and I have to say the pint was absolutely yeah. beautiful from how yeah. it was poured, left to settle, presented tasted yeah. i wrote to the bar so yeah so after brilliant. but that's framed and, uh, now up in the pub it is yeah, yeah it is yeah i wrote to the bar yeah. and they're actually framed in a, and uh, yeah. put oh, yeah. so when yeah. i when i do get a truly great pint yeah. like that yeah. Yeah. you've seen the care and attention that's people nice. have taken and yeah. one of the things that does frustrate me in a way um is you can't get a great pint outside of ireland which i absolutely do not believe yeah um i so we have we have our standards from keg to glass as you say once yeah. the keg is fresh once you manage all the elements yeah. in a way Guinness is easy because there's one right answer yeah. and that's what people love is, is when yeah. you get that right answer right yeah. but the right answer is challenging to get to so mm. it's managing all those elements with yeah. our, our quality teams manage around the world to make sure you get yeah. that that great beautiful pint mm. every time what's there. the situation in England then at the moment with quality control because years ago we used to see it that you know the black van would pull up outside the pub the guy would come in he'd be just checking things over I've not seen that for a long time. Oh, they're still there. Are they still yeah, there? Yeah, the quality team are uh, still any there. Any jobs going? <laughs> <laughs> send your CV. Still yeah. There. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, because it used to be the old saying, oh, you know, Guinness doesn't travel well. It's, it's, how, it's how it's managed. Yeah. So yeah. it is possible. And 
in Ireland we have got we have got we're very close to the to the bars and yeah. we have a we have, we have a big team and in other markets it. where we, other breweries distribute for us we have the same quality standards and everything mm. else it's making sure we get that quality mm. training mm. right all across the world that's yeah. our and capability is a huge so a huge part of my role and um, our brand ambassadors is all about capability I always look after mine, even the cans. You know, if I get it from the supermarket, you're, it's thrown in the back of the car, it gets to your house, in the fridge, let it settle. And that's the bit for me about Guinness doesn't travel. Well, it does, but you've got to look after it and take care of it as well, yeah. that, Absolutely. isn't it? One of the funniest things when we launched this was people had got the cans, found them and found the year and then had to wait till the following day yeah. to try yeah. it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the guidance in there tells you, yeah, leave it yeah, in the fridge. Yeah. Leave, leave them overnight and yeah. leave the cans yeah. overnight yeah. in the fridge, because temperature is... Yeah. Temperature yeah. is such a It's a hard thing to do though. If you've just got that device and you've got your can. <laughs> you want to open them. Yeah. <laughs> you put them in a different fridge and you know, the temperature might be too cold. So you get out and usually the head's smaller, isn't it, is when it's cold? Yeah, uh, so, if it's, so if the fridges are colder, the head will go. What you do is you get less CO2 breakout yeah. when it's cold, so the head goes that bit thin. So a lot of this is stuff, there's two gases in, in draft Guinness, the CO2 and there's nitrogen. Um, what happens is the nitrogen level determines the surge and the settle and the creaminess, but the size of the head is determined by the carbon dioxide. And, yeah. it's, and it's nitrogen actually um, is harder to get out. When you get it out, it comes out quite easily. CO2 breaks out quite easily. It's quite easy to yeah. break it out. Yeah. If you, you know, if you shake a soft drink, it all comes blasting yeah. out. But it's quite temperature dependent. So yeah. if, if, you are, if a Guinness or any beer is too warm, that's not only Guinness, it's any beer, if it's too warm, the head will be quite big. Mm. And if it's too cold, the head will be that bit thinner yeah. just because of the amount of CO2 that you, that you actually get to break out of the gas, out of the beer. Because if we go around, we give our little scores. Yeah. As a Guinness quality team, you go around, you're checking the quality. Do you have your own internal scoring system? We do, yeah. So we, we, we would rate, so in, in the brewery, for example, we rate it all on flavour. Yeah. So, so every day at 10 o'clock, and you'll see the clock that is kind of um, testament to that when you go around the storehouse, the 10 o'clock clock every day, at least six trained Guinness tasters have to taste every yeah. batch that has been kegged the previous day. Mm -hmm. So the kegs won't go out until the taste panel tastes them the following day. And if it's a really busy occasion or coming up to say like Christmas or St. Patrick's Day or a a Six Nations match and the kegs need to go out, we'll all get a phone call to go straight to the keg plant mm. and we will taste in the mm. keg plant taste mm. room there and the beer will go straight out. Yeah. But no beer goes out unless it's been rated by 10, uh, been scored and passed by uh, by yeah. at least six tasters. We have all these other ways then of rating beer. So for example, Nitro Surge, had we matched it to the flavour of, of mm. keg in terms of flavour? And look, there's no, there's no denying the flavour is as good mm. as you would get with any Guinness. Mm. You're not in a pub, so it's yeah. not a pub pint. Yeah. You're not sitting in the amazing atmosphere yeah. of the pub. When it you're all adds to that, doesn't it? it that yeah. all adds yeah. to the experience, yeah. Yeah. and that's why I would always say a pub pint. You can't beat a pub pint yeah. because you're in a pub. But in terms of the quality of the pour and the liquid and how it surges and everything, we have a thing what we call difference from control, where we will give our expert panel a sample and say that's the control and then we will give samples and it could be like a can draft guinness and we put a nitro surge in and mm -hmm. typically anything above eight and a half out of ten is what we would statistically say you can't a consumer won't spot blind mm -hmm. okay um and nitro surge scored 10 out of 10 yeah. Yeah. which was unheard of for anything yeah. in yeah. terms of taste we have our mystery shopper program around the world mm -hmm. we have people going into bars for us ordering pints and they'll Feedback back to me then mm -hmm. on whether the glassware was correct, whether it was clean, whether it was a two-part pour, whether it was don't, what the head height was, what the temperature mm -hmm. was like. And we build up all that data and then we feed that into our quality Excellent. teams. When I'm in market, I do it myself. Yeah. I will go out and just order a pint and not, yeah. have, not, have, a <laughs> not yeah. have a Guinness jumper on and just order a pint and sit there and enjoy it yeah. and just observe how yeah. and chat to people, and sometimes That's chat to the bar staff. Yeah. About oh, that's I suppose doing things like this probably doesn't help then. Getting you on camera, we <laughs> yeah, would be like, oh, yeah. I've clocked now. Have to go with a, like a fake yeah. tash on or something. We've got someone from uh, from Instagram has asked, what can be the reason that the Guinness in my local is very watery and not as creamy as it should be? What can cause that? Um, it usually comes down to 
gas levels. Mm -hmm. So the beer and the keg is exactly the same. Yeah. Okay. No matter where you are in the world, it's the same beer. And yeah. one of the one of the things actually I talk to even our sales teams about because one of the most frequent questions I get asked, particular when we launched the new technology, was is the beer the same? Mm -hmm. So we have one, and you when I show you around the brewery, you'll see with the tankers going out. Mm -hmm. Right. I think I think in your Instagram you yeah. saw yeah, it yesterday. Yeah, yeah. So it was really cool. <laughs> but. Um, that's Guinness, right? Yeah. We've one brew. Yeah. We've one Guinness brew. It's all the same beer, yeah. whether it goes into keg for a bar in Dublin or London or New York or yeah. Singapore. It's all the same keg. And that's the same for the cans as well? Same beer yeah. cans. So the packaging line will decide whether that tanker is going to the can line, the keg yeah. line, the bottles. It'll go to one of them, but it's the same beer. Yeah. One of the most interesting conversations I've had with people is around if they put on the wrong gas by accident. And this happens quite a lot sometimes. Um, that I see when people ask me about this, I say, well, have it, was the keg right at the start? And then all of a sudden it starts to, it doesn't right. seem, it doesn't pour as well as mm -hmm. the keg empties. And that's usually to do with the gas that's being used to push the keg out. Because if the gas isn't right that's pushing the keg out, the gas that is going into the keg starts to affect the gas content of the beer. Mm -hmm. So what a lot of people don't know is the gas that we push that's in the bottle is nothing to do with the gas that's breaking out if the gas is right. What it does is push, all the gas we need for Guinness is dissolved in the beer. So all the gas that's pushing into the keg, all it's doing is replacing the headspace in the keg mm. and making sure that the gas that's in the beer stays dissolved at the same ratio of CO2 right. and nitrogen. So if the gas going in is correct, the ratios all stay the same. If the gas going in is not right, the ratios start to shift. And that's when you start to see, so sometimes you can say, beautiful point you get a great point next time it's not so good it could be due to gas levels yeah the things that we focus on in terms of quality from the keg gas levels the temperature the line cleaning making sure the lines are cleaned regularly making yeah. sure we talked about freshness of keg that you're managing your stock rotation in terms of making sure and that's why when we know the kegs move so fast we put such a short shelf life on them yeah. to make sure that they rotate in the right order mm. yeah. that you're not leaving stock yeah. there what about the tap? Because you, you mentioned earlier about you know the nozzle yeah. on the pumps have something in them. We would do you want to have a look at one. Yeah, we do recommend with this one that you take it out and you clean it regularly. Right. So making sure you put it all back together. So yeah. really that important. might not be done in certain. So pumps. if you lose yeah. the if yeah. you if you lose the plate, the gas won't yeah. break out. It'll come out flat. You yeah. might get some yeah. breakout when it hits the glass, mm -hmm. but it it won't surge in the same way. If you lose the throw straightener, you get all sorts yeah. of bubbles through it as well. If you get bubbles in the head because you you what you're doing is when it's surging, it's pulling in air from the atmosphere, and that's what creates the bubbles. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like one of the one of the Ones I problem solved for a guy working in a bar and he contacted me on Instagram saying, like, a pour is great, it looks mm. great, but I get these kind of little stream of bubbles that come out when he's pouring, yeah. right? But everything else looks great, except he gets these tiny bubbles. And I said, go around your, go around your lines and check, have you any loose connections? Because you, what you're doing is, is you're getting air in. Somewhere, and the air yeah, is creating those little bubbles. Getting in there somewhere. And as he found a loose connection under the bar, and he said, fixed Sorted. it instantaneously. Excellent. So... Great to, great, great to be able to solve a problem like that. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> nice and easy. We love Guinness on draft. Original bottled, bottled Guinness. Uh, maybe like, you know, cold brew coffee, beer, all that kind of stuff. We love yeah. it all. Um, but a fun little question. We'll ask our Q&A guests. Uh, if you must choose to drink one, sip one, and tip one, what, what are you going for? Be? Yeah. Um, okay, so to, to drink one, what do I say? But it's obviously Guinness draft. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to a bar, Guinness draft. Yeah. Sip one, I do a lot of work in... Africa, um, so a lot of people would know Guinness Foreign Extra Stout, yeah. which is synonymous with East and West Africa, the Caribbean, and Southeast Asia. That I would sit and savor. Yeah, know, I would sip it and pour it in the little goblet glass. It's quite strong, isn't it? It's yeah. yeah it's it's typically seven and a half percent in most of our markets. There are some variances on the alcohol around the world. And tip, that's a funny one, <laughs> um, but it's the, I mean, it's kind of a different answer to that. So. Anyone who follows my Instagram will know that I have my own bar in the garage. We talked about where I developed yeah. nitrous urge and did a lot of testing. So what's kind of off, what you can't see in a lot of the pictures of the bar is a window right beside it. So as I was pouring all the way through lockdown, pouring, and we poured pint after pint. Again, it was all about consistency, consistency, consistency. And all that was done in my garage. So I was then tipping yeah. out the window. I'd otherwise, say, I'd you'd say, be on the floor. Otherwise, <laughs> I'd say, yeah, the odd one I would, I would sip, obviously, to check the flavour. Yeah. But um, and then on other occasions, we would be checking. And one of the questions was, does it lace the same way? That was critical for nitrous as well. Yeah. So we would, I would have a pint on a Friday, 
mm. the evening when I was finished work I'd sit and pour a few mm. and it was funny because then I'd post a lot of those points on Instagram and they're like oh my god your bar is so good and I, was, I wasn't able to tell anybody well wait till you see what I'm pouring it on <laughs> <laughs> which is the can and the device yeah. is standing slightly off camera <laughs> so we've got a bit of an obvious question possibly someone's asked because obviously you're here in the storehouse but where's the best pint you think you've ever had it's more to me to the emotion yeah. Of, yeah. of where you are so some of my favourite bars like I think the Guinness there is great like mm. I love I love going across to the Academy Bar here I love going up to the, the Gravity Bar and sitting looking out over Dublin yeah. my favourite pint ever has probably been 2009 in Cardiff after we won the Grand Slam oh. it's for, to me it's all about yeah. the celebration yeah. Um, it's where I, I, and, yeah. and that's what Love of Guinness evokes the memories. It's yeah. about the whole environment you're in, the yeah. crack you're having. And that's what we found, you know. Yeah. And we go around and we try and be as good as we can when we sort of judge a pint yeah. of Guinness. Mm. But sometimes that has an effect on our scoring. In God. the moment, it's, it's like all, it's it the experience, isn't it? That's what, what we talk about with yeah. Nigel Surge wouldn't replace a pub pint yeah. because yeah. You, you have that experience. That's yeah. it, yeah. You, you have that ambience yeah. that you're sort of you're surrounded by. Like I remember, like I would say, and I won't say which pub it is because it's in my hometown where I live, <laughs> but my first pint after lockdown out, like having yeah. drank some beautiful pints and yeah. my neighbors in my area will know how I tested this was on yeah. Saturday evenings, I dropped everyone a pint. So yeah, I used brilliant. to knock on the door, so mask on, clothes yeah. on, oh, amazing. and I would pour pints in my garage and I would go to the neighbours knock on the door and this is when all the bar everything was closed you couldn't go yeah, any, you couldn't yeah. go anywhere beyond your, your three kilometres yeah. at one point and five kilometres I'd knock I'd hand over two points I'd get back I wouldn't let them wash the glasses I had to oh, wash the glasses so uh, I would take back the glasses from the previous week and I'd bring them home wash them and then I'd go around all the neighbours and they eventually they were like where like, do you have a keg and I was like no and I can't, I'll, I'll show you one day what yeah I can't tell you how amazing and, uh, <laughs> Kilkenny. Yeah, they would drink it out. So they yeah. didn't even do it. And I think that's what's magical about working for yeah. Guinness. The reaction yeah. people have, and the reaction people had to that Saturday. And if it was a Six Nations game on a Sunday, I'd also drop them a pint on the Sunday yeah. as well. What kind a nice neighbour. Eh? <laughs> I know, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Literally, I think the question someone's put here, and I thought it was quite a good, deep, meaningful question, maybe to round things up, is what does Guinness mean to you? In terms of, like, personally, so, look, it's, I've, I've been one of the, like, very few people fortunate enough to be able yeah. to devote my career to get to Guinness. Yeah. When I show you around the brewery, you have to kind of almost pinch yourself that this is yeah. what you get to do for yeah. a living. So, for me, Guinness is, for me, my family, my wife, it, is, it has given us a way of life, it's given us a living, it's given me a career, it's given me the opportunity to travel the world, it's given me the opportunity to show my kids parts of the world they would never mm. see like we lived in Ghana yeah you know, so my kids when they were very young lived in Ghana they got to experience parts of the world you never get mm. to experience mm. that mm. if I didn't have Guinness in my life personally then outside of the of work like it is such an iconic brand it's so something we're all so proud of well this is that we saw as soon as we landed in in Dublin airport we when you come through the first thing you see is it's obviously Guinness. that that Guinness storehouse yeah. sign and all the Guinness branding along it's 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 like the pride and joy, isn't it, of this country? Well, that's it always it, feels yeah. Like. yeah, amazing. Well, I feel like well, I, we could literally just sit here and we talk could, to you all day. Well, yeah. But I suppose, yeah, you're a busy man, so uh, you know. We we'll, want the tour as well. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We need the tour. Thanks for coming in. Oh, Thanks for coming thank over you. to us. Yeah, thank you for, for the invitation. Honestly, absolute honour. And hopefully, the viewers are going to love this. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers.